What's up guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. My name is Chloe, I make Christian content on the internet, I make lifestyle videos, I make vlogs, I make cool cooking videos, I don't know, I'm, I'm a bootbatsy mom, that's exciting. I'm actually pregnant with my very first baby, so that's really cool. So yeah, I make pregnancy videos, just lots of cool videos. So if you guys like what you see today, don't forget to subscribe to stick around to just become a part of this community that we have here on YouTube. and then. Just just to be notified whenever I post new videos because it's really exciting and really fun. But today I want to talk about something that I really struggled with as a Christian, as a new believer, and just in my walk with God, and that was studying the Bible. I feel like it's so important that we study the Bible, that we understand the Bible, that we can clearly understand the context of what we're reading. But I was struggling finding out how do I know this? How do I find this information out? You know, the Bible is beautiful and it is and it is just amazing, but it's also super complex and it's super hard to understand for some people and depending on which translation you have, depending on where you live, where you're from, and what culture you have, what language you speak, the Bible can be hard to understand for some people and that's how it is for me. The Bible is something that I actually have to work really hard at to understand, to learn, and to study. And so over my life and just being a Christian, I've actually compiled these resources that I want to share with you guys today that have helped me study my Bible, that helped me understand the scriptures better, and that just have just have been really good tools for me in my daily um, relationship with the Lord and in the way that I study and read the Bible and just how I go to the Lord every single day. And so I think it's really important that we do understand what we're reading, that we have the context of what we're reading, and that we can really thoroughly understand what the passage was intended for. And so today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my top nine resources to help you guys get better in your Bible studies and to just um, dig deeper and to just help you maybe understand and learn better. Because like I said, for me, that was a huge stumbling block for me was that it was hard for me to learn and understand what I was reading. And so I am really excited to share with you guys these things today because these are things that have personally helped me so much over the years. And I really don't know if I could understand the Bible without them because these things have helped me, have truly, truly helped me to in-depth study and to actually understand what I'm reading. So I'm really excited to share these things with you guys today. If you guys are ready, stay tuned and let's just get into those things. So the first few things that I'm going to talk about are commentaries. And if you guys don't know what a commentary is, totally okay. It's not a very like common word, but a commentary is someone else's thoughts. A theologian, maybe someone who is a pastor, who whatever it is, it is somebody's thoughts that are compiled to help you study each each each, each verse in depth. And so the first one I want to talk about is this one and that is called the Moody Bible Commentary. And I know this one looks very overwhelming. It's humongous. Literally the biggest book that I own. But let me just tell you guys really quick that this is so cool. It gives you so much information, so much in-depth information. And what it does is it in the beginning of each each book, it'll give you an introduction to the to the book. It'll tell you the author, it'll tell you the date, it'll tell you the recipients, the structure and style, the themes. It'll give you an outline of the entire book and it'll go like literally in-depth outlining every single thing that you can expect in the in the book. And then what it does is it actually breaks down every single verse. So say I'm reading Genesis four verse two, and I don't understand what it's saying. I can go in my commentary and I can look up Genesis four verse two, and it'll have commentary about that exact verse. So as you can see here, I turned to Genesis, we're in Genesis, and it literally has commentary and it kind of explains more about Genesis 4 verse 2 and it'll kind of explain you know what is it meaning what does this have to do with the further chapters in the Bible where can I connect it to where were they at what, what is important to know about exactly what I'm reading and so that is really really cool to know and this commentary is the Moody Bible commentary it is from a couple people I believe of the uh, oh it says right here one a one volume commentary on the whole entire Bible by the faculty of Moody Bible Institute. And if you guys don't know, Moody Bible Institute is actually a college in Chicago, which is a Bible college, which is really, really cool. So this is just written by a ton of people from there who have really deep theology and they just know a lot. And so this is a very 
knowledge compacted commentary that I recommend totally and I will link this I'll link everything that I'm that I'm mentioning today down below but I definitely recommend this one for one that if you really want to get in depth in a commentary another commentary that's really really cool which is completely free and it's also not physical it's on your phone is called enduring word and what enduring word is is the same exact thing has commentary in every single verse but it's completely online and it's completely free so you can go to enduringword.com I believe or you can get the app as well I actually haven't used the app personally but I just know that they have an app and I think it works the same way and you can like type in the exact verse that you want and a ton of commentaries will pop up you can type in the exact verse that you're looking for and this guy he, he actually wrote a commentary on every single verse in the Bible and I think he uses the King James version but the way that he writes and expands on different verses is really really encouraging and so I love that one I have used that one for years so say you're reading the Bible you don't understand a verse you can just go to enduringword.com type in your thing really quick and then he'll explain and go in depth about what that verse means and his thoughts on that verse and I think it's really it's really nice to see someone else's thoughts on a verse and to see someone else what they got from a passage what they're thinking about in a passage and that kind of thing so I love enduring word the next thing I'm gonna recommend one sec is study Bibles and if you guys don't have a study Bible I 100% 100% recommend that you get a study Bible and what a study Bible is is it is a it is a Bible but it actually has the commentary in it it has study notes in it and so I actually have three different I know a lot three different study Bibles right here this one is an ESV one like I said I'll link all of these down below this is an ESV one which is the English Standard Version and this one is really cool because it has maps in it it has just lots of different notes and so you see here on the bottom it is full of study notes. So this is the scripture. It's a single column scripture. And then on here, it's a double column and it talks, um, it goes in depth on each each verse. There's commentary. And there's also cross references up here to other verses that they're talking about that they're referencing in the passage. Like I said, some colorful maps. So this one is really cool if you guys like the ESV, but a study Bible, like I said, it has everything in one place. So you don't need to have a commentary with your Bible. You don't need to have that. You can actually just have your Bible and study your Bible and everything is there which I love and also it has all the information in the beginning of the chapter like I mentioned earlier about the author that has timelines in it I haven't actually used this one that much this is a newer one for me but this is a really cool one too so this one goes as key themes has the outline just lots of really really cool in-depth stuff and like I said when you're reading it there are tons and tons of study notes so as you can see this is the scripture and then all of this is the study notes so that is that is super cool. So this is one of the study Bibles that I recommend. This next one is my personal favorite translation of the Bible, and that is the NLT version. And this is the one that I have for that one. This is just one that I was gifted from my family, has my name, my maiden name on the bottom there. And like I said, it's the exact same thing. However, this is a life application study Bible. And so what a life application study Bible is, is it has kind of many devotionals in it. Um, and so I'm just turned to a random one, First Chronicles. 10 or 11 or whatever and it actually will have a little section in here that kind of goes more in depth about whatever one of the key themes was from the page and so this one says covenant unfaithfulness and so it'll go into depth about what that is and sometimes it'll have a little devotional talking about how you can apply that to your life and how you can apply what you're reading to your life which is why it's called the life application study bible or like on this page it'll go in depth about a certain character and it'll just tell you more about the person and their life and just different things like that and so and then this one as well has study notes on the bottom too so more commentary I'm trying to find one that I didn't write on so here is a thing of Proverbs it has the Proverbs and it has study notes on the bottom so this one is really really cool as well and then this is the other study Bible that I have and this is the NIV version and again this is a life application study Bible so it's very very similar to the one that I just showed you I think like the only thing that's different is the version honestly yeah it's pretty much the same thing but sometimes it'll have really good cross references or things like that but this is pretty much the exact same thing as those two but this one is an NIV version so that's the only difference but like I said if you guys have not had a study Bible I really recommend getting a study Bible to help you understand passage and have it all be in one place I know for me that's what I love which is why I have so many study Bibles is because I like having everything in one book I don't like having to use the internet that much when I'm 
studying the Bible, but I do, obviously. But yeah, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend a study Bible if you guys don't have one and you want to deepen your um, knowledge of the word. The next one is another online reference and that is called Blue Letter Bible. And this one is really cool because unlike Enduring Word, this one you can actually type in the verse that you want and then you can choose the translation, you can choose whatever you want. And then actually if you click commentary, a ton of different commentaries will pop up. And so this one's not just one person, it's not just one commentary, it's actually a ton of different things that will lead you to different websites and you can click on it and it'll actually tell you more about the verse, but you have a lot of options to choose from. My mom has used Blue Letter Bibles for Bible for years. I actually haven't used it that much. I actually use Enduring Word more, uh, surprisingly. But Blue Letter Bible, I know is really, really popular. My mom swears by it. And so that one is really good as well. And I like how you can choose the translation on that one because like I said, I believe Enduring Word is all King James Version. And so it'd be really cool to use Blue Letter Bible to be able to use your own translation and see what that exact translation is like meaning. The next thing, which sounds very, very basic, but it's so true and it is a dictionary. I literally just use Google like I will type in a word and then like definition I'll like hit enter and then like Google will tell me what the word means and it'll give me a definition But when you are reading a, the, your Bible and you, you come across a word that maybe you understand what it means But maybe you want to know more context or maybe you want to know what exactly does that word mean? Maybe you don't know what the word means and There's also Bible dictionaries which are really cool because you can type in a word and it'll tell you The context of that word in biblical times in the time that the, the word was written and so you can understand what the passage is really meaning based off of the context of that word in those times. And so Bible dictionaries or just regular dictionaries, honestly, I just use Google most of the time. If I come across a word that I don't necessarily know exactly what the definition of, I literally just like transformed uh, definition, Google. And then I'll just look up what exactly that means. And a lot of times I'll like write it in my Bible or on a notebook or whatever on a sticky note, just pop that in my Bible. And it's so good to have, especially when you go back and read the next time you'll actually have the definition there and you can like remember what you studied. It's really cool. Okay, and the next two recommendations are both YouTube recommendations. And so the first one is called The Bible Project. And if you have been a believer for a while or any time really, you probably have heard of The Bible Project. The Bible Project is a YouTube channel that has literally made videos on every single book of the Bible and they just they just make videos overviewing the entire chapter or the entire book of the Bible and so you can literally go on YouTube type in Ruth Bible project and the a video will come up where they have gone in depth and gave you in an in-depth overview of the entire book of Ruth and kind of walked you through that entire book and it's an animated or not animated it's like a drawn lesson and so it's like really easy to understand but I definitely definitely recommend that for Christians for anyone really if you are starting a book just watch that first for me I'm doing Ephesians right now you guys know that on my channel and before I, I started the study I actually went to the Bible Trap Project to watch his video on Ephesians first because it's a really great way to just get a very simple but deep overview of a book of the Bible. The next thing that I love doing, which is also what I did for my Ephesians study, is I will go on YouTube and I will simply put in whatever scripture that I am studying. So say I was doing Ephesians 2, I will literally type in YouTube and I'll say Ephesians 2 sermons. And like, like thousands, hundreds of things pop up of sermons on that exact passage. And so so if you guys want, that is something that I do all the time. I honestly do this almost every single time I read the Bible. I love just seeing different pastors takes on it and just different. Um, it's kind of like a commentary, but in a sermon form, in a speaking form. And so I love that. I love just searching up on YouTube sermons about certain passages. And I think I've never like searched one up and there not be a sermon on a specific passage. And so I pretty much can guarantee that if you look something up, something's gonna pop up at some point. So that is one that I really, I, I do that one so frequently. Probably I do that more than almost any of these other things. And then the next thing is another app, which you guys probably know what this is. If you know what the Bible is, it's called the Bible app. I'm pretty sure it's Bible Gateway. This is people that own the app, I think. And on the app, they have devotionals, they have reading plans. You can add friends on there and things like that. There's a lot of different cool features that you can do on there. But the reason I love it is because one, you can choose a specific reading plan. And so say you're really struggling with one topic in your life or you really wanna focus on one topic 
or it's a holiday or whatever it is, they will have a Bible, or not a Bible study, but a reading plan and slash devotional that you can follow along to go with whatever topic you want to study. And so say you're struggling with forgiveness and you really wanna pray about forgiveness. You can just go on there and look up a devotional about forgiveness and it will give you a reading plan and a devotional to walk you through forgiveness. And so those are, it's a more of a topical study instead of a biblical study, but I mean, it's still a biblical study, but you know what I'm saying? It's based off of a topic, not based off of, you know what I'm saying? And so doing it that way is a really cool resource, like I said, because you can pretty much look up anything that you're going through and they'll have some kind of reading plan or devotional or something that will help you in that season and also with the word, incorporating the word into that and into what you're going through. So that whatever you're going through, you can find in the word how people dealt with it, how God handles things and just things like that. It's really cool. And the very last thing I'm gonna recommend is something that my husband loves a lot and I don't have a physical version of but I have a paper of and that is a chronological Bible and what a chronological Bible is is it puts the entire Bible because if you guys didn't know the Bible is actually not in chronological form it's actually grouped together by um, sections and it's not actually chronological which chronological means from the like the beginning of the time that was written to the end it doesn't go in order of events that that happened and so if you, and if you don't have a chronological Bible you can also just Google like chronological order of the Bible and there are tons of free reading plans actually that you can just get and I, I printed one myself so I could still you know I could still use my own Bible but I could follow along with a, a reading plan that would take me chronologically through the Bible um, my husband actually has a physical copy of a chronological Bible and it's it's unlike any other Bible that you'll have because it's not in the order of like a normal Bible it's an actual chronological order and so you'll have some Psalms in the middle of first Samuel you'll have random things like that but the reason chronological Bibles are so helpful Helpful is because it really helps you understand the Bible as one big story I and mean, it helps you kind of read it like a book because I know a lot of new believers they'll, they'll say okay I'll read the Bible and I'll, I'll start in Genesis and I'll keep on reading but once you get to a certain point as most of you know it's not it won't make sense it's not in chronological order and so when you actually have it in that order you can read it like an actual book you can read it from front to back and it'll make sense and it'll be one big story and so for me that's something that's really helpful I love looking at things in grand scheme and just knowing um, the order of things and so I love reading, either reading the Bible chronologically through a reading plan or a paper or whatever it is, you can write it yourself, or just through buying a chronological physical Bible that you can just read from cover to cover and have it be that way. But yes, so those are my top nine favorite resources for studying the Bible. I know that was a lot. That video was a lot longer than I expected it to be. So I'm sorry if you guys could not stick around the whole time, but you guys did. Thank you so much. Give this video a thumbs up so I know you're a real trooper. You stuck around this whole time, but I love you guys so much. And I really, really, I truly do hope that this video helped you in some way and give you some resources that you can apply to your Bible study that you can start using um, in your quiet time to really understand and deeply understand um, and, and deepen your knowledge of the word and just grow in your relationship with God and just kind of have a better understanding of what you're reading because I struggled with that for so long and I struggled really finding out how do I how, how do I know this because I'm reading this but I don't understand what it means and so these are all the things that I have compiled to help me understand better because that is something that I'm sure so many people struggle with like I did. So I really hope that these things helped you. If it did help you, comment down below which thing that you're gonna use first, which thing that you wanna use like in your quiet time next because it'd be really cool to know if you guys are gonna start incorporating these things in your daily quiet time or if you guys are gonna like ignore all of them. I don't know. Comment down below if you guys are gonna use any of these because it'd be really fun to know. I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in the next video. See you next time.